How do you get to understand and navigate your unique confidence section of Q and get the best out of it? This is what this video is about. This home screen appears on your smartphone or dashboard, whichever you prefer to use when you have completed your Q questionnaire and your personalized Q is ready. So now we're going to go into the confidence section. There are two icons within confidence. One is about making confidence easier, and the second is about build my confidence. So we're going to start here to understand the science behind your confidence. In making confidence easier, you will find videos that will help you understand what confidence is and the key factors that impact it. And start to understand too that it's a skill like any other that you can build. Now there's some other tabs up the top here and we're going to start with my confidence drivers. Your confidence drivers are all about what gives you a sense of belonging in a group. And Q will list those from what's the most to least important for you. For this particular person, what's key to them is a feeling of connection and autonomy. And Q will also explain what these mean. When you start to understand that about yourself and you're in a group and it doesn't feel right for you, then you can start to ask yourself, am I getting the connection and autonomy or whatever your particular preferences are here? And if you're not, then maybe you need to change groups. It starts to make you understand what it is that's important to you and start to unravel the situation if, in fact, these items aren't present. It's important to be able to be with people that we like and we feel we belong with. And this can help you identify what will create that for you in your life. Now we're going to look at top tension points. Top tension points are effectively two strengths that you have that conflict. And it's important to remember we all have them, but often we don't understand what's going on until we raise them into our awareness. They often give you self-doubt, impacting your confidence, and they often reflect your vulnerabilities, but you can learn to cope with them once you know what they are. Q will look at your three top tension points. It'll look at your strengths and your vulnerability for each. And it will always link it back to the science as to why it has said you have that particular tension point. Now we're going to look at bad day behavior. This is something we all have. And we often get it when we're stressed or we don't feel that we're able to get what it is that we truly want. So. Someone on a bad day in this particular profile is green. And Q will explain what each bad day means and how you will appear to other people. For example, a green bad day will appear submissive to other people. They might come off as being unclear. You could seem too agreeable at times and you may not be demanding enough of other people. On a good day, what we tend to be is in our blue confidence style. This is where we're clear and considerate of others, but we all have those bad days, as I mentioned earlier. But it's important to understand the bad day in other people too. There's the green style that we've just mentioned. There's also red and orange. And Q explains what sort of behaviors show up in each of those bad day styles. It's also important to know that we can have a preference for green, for example, but sometimes we can slip into these other bad days as well. And let me give you an example. If someone's non-demanding, too agreeable, submissive and unclear in what it is that they want, they can sometimes say yes when they really mean no. It may mean internally that they're feeling, I'm always saying yes, but actually I want to do something different. And then there can become a time where there's a tipping point to that, where you've just had enough, and that means then that you can step into this red bad day zone where you can actually say, no, I've just had it. And that can come as a real surprise to other people because they're used to you being here. So it's just raising your awareness about whether or not you are being clear or assertive, interested or respectful, because this is the blue confidence zone or whether or not you're slipping into this and not being able to say what you truly want. And when we understand that, then we have a much greater appreciation why we behave in the way we do. And we can choose to behave in a different way 
that's much more likely to give us what we want. And that is in the way of being in the blue confidence zone. And Q will explain in the next section how you can get to that zone. Q will explain more about what your bad day behavior means. And it also highlights we're all human, but being aware of yours means you can manage it if you want to. Q always relates back to your profile so you understand where this green bad day comes from. And it'll also highlight to you the strength of your behaviors and how easy it is going to be for you to be able to flex to the natural gap that occurs for every strength that we have. Now we're going to click on the confidence icon down the bottom of your screen to return to that section. And we're going to click on build my confidence. Again, there's some more videos that are available for you to be able to explore about confidence. And we're going to look at managing confidence drivers. You'll remember earlier, we talked about what drives your confidence in a group. And I think it's really important to understand that changing groups in your life is really normal. But sometimes we feel uncomfortable doing that because we don't know what other options are available for us. So this will just give a little bit of explanation about changing groups, and understanding that staying in a group isn't delivering for you will absolutely erode your sense of belonging. It will drag you down as you lose your sense of self-worth. And so knowing what your driver is and what you need, you do actually have choices and you have the power to take charge of your thoughts and actions in life. And when we feel that, we feel so much more in the driving seat. Okay. So now we're going to go and start how to manage your confidence drivers in a group. As we highlighted earlier, for this particular profile, connection and autonomy were really important to them. They were their primary drivers in a group. And we're going to click on this now to understand what that means. Okay, exploring your connection, confidence in a group. Connection's all about feeling a sense of genuine engagement with your group where your relationships with people are positive and harmonious for you. It's worth it and it feels good to be part of the group. And if that's missing, your confidence will be eroded. And if your sense of connection is missing, you'll feel like, what's the point? You will feel disconnected from others. You feel like you don't fit in. You've got nothing in common with them. And you'll feel discomfort when together. Now, Q will explore all these different connection factors depending on your own individual preference. Q will also ask, whether or not you feel that you have this genuine engagement within your social group and just get you to answer a few questions so you can explore that within yourself. And you can also save your answers if you wish. So let's click this let's go button and see what sort of choices you can create. If in fact you need to increase your connection options for change, you have an option to leave the group, find a new group, change the group, change yourself, or create a new group. Again, this makes us feel that we are not stuck. We do have choices. And it's important to be able to find those connection options that we really need in a group to make us feel good, because that will build our confidence. Now we're going to look at managing tension points. And what Q will do is look at your individual tension points and give you some trusted advice about what you can do in order to manage them when they show up in your life. And it's important to know that your tension points are both strengths and vulnerabilities, but they're totally normal and natural, and everyone has them. Now we're going to look at manage bad day behavior. When you understand your bad day style, you can learn how to manage it more effectively. So you can have more healthy, pleasant and productive relationships in your life. And actually, healthy relationships are so important for both our physical and mental health. It also builds confidence. So what Q will let you explore is what triggers a green style in you, the impact of your green style, or whatever your unique style is. Because some will be in the red box, some will be in the orange box, some will be in the green box. The impact of your green style on others, the impact of green styles on you, the impact of orange styles on you, the impact of red styles on you, how to change and move from green to the blue confidence behavior, 
and setting a goal to make change happen. So let's just explore one of these, the impact of a red style on you. And it's because it's important to be aware of how others' bad day style impacts you. And if for a green bad day person, they have a red bad day engagement with someone else, this is what it's going to make them feel like, like they're being bullied, like the other person doesn't care, like you're being controlled and manipulated, a loss of respect for the person, like hiding things from them because you're frightened to tell them the truth. And it's important to make some notes, write down about any thoughts or feelings you have below. Perhaps there's somebody like this in your life. And so it's good to be able to recognize who they are and know that their behavior actually has got nothing to do with you and everything to do with them. And when we can understand that, then we can stop feeling responsible for someone else's behavior. Because really, we can only be responsible for our own. And where we want to be in our relationships is in that blue confidence zone. And in order to return to the previous screen, we can click this icon up here on the left-hand side. So now what we're going to do is explore confidence zones. It's about learning about your different confidence zones. And Q is going to ask you some questions, and then you can start to understand where your comfort zones are and where they're not. And you can understand what it's like when we step outside our comfort zones and end up in a freak out zone as opposed to a learning zone. Q will explain what a unique comfort zone is, how it'll feel. It also gives you an opportunity to explore what yours are. It'll explain what a learning zone is and how that feels. Again, you'll get an opportunity to be able to explore what that means for you. And then it'll explain what a freak out zone means and what that feels like. And again, you can explore when you can end up in that zone. Comfort zones are great because they make us feel safe and feeling safe in life is important. However, there is a need to expand beyond them because if we put too many self-imposed barriers that stop us moving forward, it will impact your ability to perform and succeed in life. Q has a comfort zone exercise that will help you do this. So let's go and explore this now. Q shows you a comfort zone exercise. It gives you an example of one in particular and what it is that you need to do in order to be able to move outside a comfort zone. As we said before, if you stay within them for too long, you won't learn and develop. And that will impact your ability to succeed in the world. So Q gives you an example and then gives you an opportunity to go and do your own exercise, setting a comfort zone expansion goal. When we want to return to the home screen, we just go up here to the far left hand side and click on this Q. And in the next video, we'll explore learning.